Ninja! Welcome back to my channel once again. Today, we're going to answer another most commonly asked question here in my channel. So, stay tuned! Today's question is about salary. So, what is the minimum salary for beginner call center agents or entry-level call center agents? That is such a very good question because every one of us applies, obviously, because we also want to earn money. So, this answer is based on my experience other people's experience, my friends, my colleagues, and also based on my research. I consistently do my research when it comes to salary, um, other trends in the call center or BPO industry. So here's what I found out. If you are a beginner call center agent or what we call entry level, meaning you don't have any experience yet in the call center industry, Let's just say even though you have experience in other businesses or other industries, but it is your first time to work in the call center or BPO, then you're still considered entry level. The lowest that a company can offer these days is 12,000 pesos. But I hope that nobody's offering that anymore because I really feel that it's not worth it. There are other companies that offer a bigger compensation and benefits package. When I started in 2009, I was paid a basic pay of 12,000 pesos as a starting salary. However, at that time, I did not really feel that it was a small salary because my account was a financial account and my client was generous enough to add 4,000 pesos on top of our basic pay. So when I say basic pay, that is just your salary. That does not include yet all the bonuses or incentives, 13 month pay, and other uh, cash or monetary benefits that your company provides. And then eventually through the years, I got salary increases, bonuses, and incentives. So I was quite satisfied with how I was paid in relation to my job. That is just the lowest, but other companies, and actually I think a lot of companies nowadays offer uh, as much as 14,000 pesos. Bigger companies that require more complicated skill sets can offer up to 18,000 pesos to 20,000 pesos. Other companies even offer as much as 22 to 25,000 pesos for entry level. But then again, these are companies that need applicants or people who have good skill sets. For example, if you are multilingual or bilingual, let's say you can speak Mandarin, you can speak Spanish, most companies will be willing to pay more for those skill sets. Another thing is that if you're specialized in a certain skill or a company is looking for a specific skill set, let's just say you have to be really good in tech or you have to really be well versed when it comes to making insurance claims, making insurance policies, then they might pay you a little bit bigger. Other companies, though, provide bigger salaries even though you don't have experience as long as you are really good and you are able to reach their expectations and you have also passed their initial requirements or qualifications. So to recap that, the lowest that I believe most companies give is 12,000 pesos. It can increase to 14,000 to 16,000 for some bigger companies. For more complicated skill sets, it can also increase to 18,000 to 20,000. And in some bigger companies, it can be up to 25,000 pesos for entry level. Now, it might be different in your case depending on where you are located as well. Location also plays a little bit of a factor when it comes to your basic pay. 
Now, for you to make sure that you are given your targeted salary or basic pay, to not believe right away in what you see in the internet or the job postings or job ads, because obviously, uh, employers' ads will always show you the biggest that they can provide to entice more people to apply to their company. So you will see job ads that will say, apply now and earn up to 25,000 pesos. Take note of the word up to or apply now and earn as much as 30,000 pesos. So again, take note of the word as much as. You have to clarify and ask how much the basic pay will be. That's going to be your starting point so that you will know if this is your target salary range. Now, a lot of you might be asking, is the basic pay already what I will receive every single month? So for example, the basic pay that will be given to you is 16,000 pesos. Is that going to be what you will really receive every single month? So is that going to be 8,000 pesos every 15 days or whatever your um, salary scheme is? Well, the answer is most likely no. Here in the Philippines, we have a new tax law, the train law if you're not yet familiar with that, that was signed I believe last December 2017. If you are earning 250,000 pesos or less every year or annually, then you will not pay annual income tax anymore or you will not be taxed every single month. However, remember that there are government-mandated tax deductions. So for example, you're supposed to receive 8,000 pesos in a month. There are deductions such as SSS payment, your PhilHealth payment, and Pag-ibig payment, or whatever deductions your company may deem necessary. For example, if you enrolled to HMO or your insurance in the company and you're supposed to pay half of it and then half of it will be paid by the company then that is considered a deduction so deduct all of those government mandated deductions and all other deductions needed that is going to be your take home pay every month now good for you if you earn 250,000 pesos yearly because you will not be deducted the tax anymore. When I was working, obviously, I was deducted the taxes every single month. So that made my take home pay even smaller than it already is. Now, if you convert it to a monthly rate, uh, you should be earning 20,800 something, 800 plus below for you to not be taxed. More than that, then you will be deducted the necessary taxes to abide uh, by our government laws. Now, I have here some of the monetary benefits that you may receive uh, along with your basic pay or your entry-level pay. So for example, your basic pay is 16,000 pesos. Your company may pay you other monetary benefits such as, um, this is just an example by the way, other companies may or may not have these benefits. So it really depends on what they want to give you as an incentive or a monetary um, compensation. So an example would be monthly transportation allowance. Usually it's 1,500 pesos. It's prorated based on your attendance. We're not going to discuss how to compute all these benefits because your payroll or HR personnel will explain that to you. We also have monthly meal allowance, which is um, 1,000 pesos in our previous company. So again, the amount depends on your company. We have monthly rice allowance, 1,000 pesos. It's usually provided after one year of service or in some companies once you are regularized or after six months of working. Then we have program complexity allowance, 
We also called this our client program allowance before. The 4,000 pesos that was added to my basic pay, that was the program allowance that I was talking about. So it can be any amount depending on your company. It can be 2, 5, 4K, it depends. We also have the government mandated night differential or night shift allowance or night shift pay. This is also mandated by the government because since you're working the night shift, uh, it is very crucial that you get an additional allowance for that. It's not a joke to work at night. So the night differential should be no less than 10%. 10 to 15 percent usually for most companies of your regular wage for each hour that you have worked between 10 p.m to 6 a.m only so if your work schedule falls between 10 p.m to 6 a.m then you will be paid night differential for those hours uh, say for example you work until 12 midnight so you will be paid two hours worth of night differential pay uh, so it depends on how many hours between 10 p.m to 6 a.m you've worked now another thing is hazard pay most companies have increased this to 20 to 25 percent in other industries this is also mandatory but in the call center or bpo industry it is not really mandatory it's just given by your company because they believe that call center work going to your job in the dead of the night or in the wee hours of the morning is very dangerous and hazardous of course you are exposed to different kinds of criminalities and other stuff so it's considered hazardous that's why they provide hazard pay so it also depends on the company now we also have performance incentive the performance incentive depends obviously on your performance every month some are given monthly which i think is just fair some are given quarterly but i'd really like to have it as monthly so again it depends on your company now notice that since it's called performance incentive there will be times when you will not be paid this incentive if you haven't hit your metrics or your target scores for the month as set by your company or by your account now are the bonuses or incentives taxable in 2015 13 month pay and other benefits are taxable if they are more than 82,000 pesos so if you are paid more than that then yes but in the new law the train law they increased it to 92,000 pesos so you will be taxed for your incentives or bonuses if they're more than 92,000 pesos. That's what is applicable now. If you have been taxed more than what you should have been taxed, then that's when you will receive a tax refund at the beginning of the year. Usually end of January when everything has been settled for the previous year. So there, 13 months pay, of course, expect that when you work in the BPO call center or even an, in other industries, it is equivalent to your one month worth of basic pay. So if your basic pay is 16,000 pesos, then you will be paid 16,000 pesos in December of every year. And it's prorated depending on how many months you've already worked for in the company. In other companies, they actually pay it half and half. So half of your basic pay in the middle of the year, then half before Christmas. So it depends on your company. And it is non-taxable as long as it's not more than 92,000 pesos. So I hope you've learned about the basic compensation and benefits that you can get from your company once you apply. Again, if you really want to know if that is your target salary before you apply, do your own research. It's much better to ask insider information from people who work in that certain company just to be sure that you have the correct information so once again thank you so much for watching and for listening like and subscribe if you haven't yet and don't forget to hit that notification bell just so you'll be informed if i have new videos again my videos are every tuesdays and fridays so see you again on the next one take care and bye